Hi, this is George Jones at Maximum PC and Maximum Tech. Uh, today is a very exciting day. We just got our first uh, retail shipping Windows Phone 7. This is the HTC Surround. I'm holding it upside down. Uh, the HTC Surround's quirk is that it has a slider that allows you to rock out. It's got this little speaker on top, and it also comes with a kickstand so that you can kind of put it on your desk or use it as a speakerphone, I guess, if you wanted to. Sound quality is okay. I mean, I don't think it's uh, anything to write home to your mom about, but it's kind of an interesting phone. Um, I, what I really want to do, though, is show you exactly how the new OS works as well as how it compares to Android and uh, Apple's iOS. So let's take a look. I think, uh, why don't we start with the interface and then uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing and uh, I want to show you, right off the bat you're going to notice some differences. First off, uh, your lock screen is actually a functional lock screen now. You get information, time and date, as well as some uh, key appointments. You also get your battery and uh, other vitals at the top. So I'm going to just unlock it and bang, right away you're going to see that this is not anything like Apple's iPhone or like Android devices. Um, the way this works is each one of these cubes, they're called tiles, live tiles if you want to be technically accurate, um, it refers to specific tasks or functions. Um, you can customize these colors um, between orange, blue, green, and a few other colors. What you cannot do is customize individual tiles colors. Um, the nice thing about this is, is that as appointments pop up, I'm going to click on my calendar, it actually updates the tile so you're going to see real-time information in each one of these tiles um, that will alert you to specific tasks or actions you can do. Um, I think the one thing that I've noticed about this phone is that it doesn't have, it's not as customizable as um, Android is, meaning there are no widgets that you can place on the desktop um, or other kinds of yeah, more powerful configurations that you can use in Android. But it is, I think, a more functional OS and a more functional interface than um, Apple's is for sure. Um, oh, I'll show you one thing real quick. So if I wanted to rearrange the way the tiles work, I can just simply hold this, move it up, let go, and bang, done. And I can do that again. Uh, one other interesting thing about the OS is that it's, it's aggregating all your information into categories now versus applications. So when I click on people, I'm going to be instantly thrown into my Facebook queue, and I'm going to have all my contacts here. Um, I'm going to also have Facebook and Twitter updates here. A couple of other th key things I think are worth m noting is uh, music and videos. This Windows Phone OS automatically plugs into Zune if you have that. I know a lot of people don't. I am one of the few outliers that do. I'm ahead of my time or behind the time. Um, but you can literally just click on what you want. There's, there's music. You can scroll through. You can. Oh, there's a marketplace. You can do pretty much anything you can do on Zoom. You can do here. Okay. One other cool thing that's worth noting is their map. The the uh, the uh, Windows Phone 7 map is awesome. It's actually I, I've been pleasantly surprised how nice this is. Easy, quick scrolling. There's AT&T Park, home of the world champion uh, San Francisco Giants. If I want to see where I am, check this out. Boop. That's pretty cool. It just zooms into locations. I like the way it does that. Um, search is easily handled just like it is in every other OS by just typing in your, your uh, information here. Okay, let's take a quick look at email. I want to show you guys how the email functionality works. It's, it's pretty slick, i got to say. You get into it by clicking Outlook or, or your Comcast account. There's also built-in configuration for Google Mail. Um, I'm going to use Outlook since that's, that's what we use here at the Maximum PC offices. Um, clean display. Unfortunately, you can't configure the font sizes on the display, which is a little bit disappointing. I expect that we'll see that in subsequent releases of the operating system. Um, it's easy to click on something. There's your email spit out. Pretty nice. If I want to reply, I just click the email and I click the reply button. Uh, so, this is a good time to talk about the keyboard a little bit. It's pretty standard. It's a uh, just like the iOS and the Android OS, it is fairly easy to use and it autocorrects over time. You can see as I'm typing in words wrong, it's automatically correcting for me. Um, I, I, my only disappointment is that, that you can't do long key presses to get um, so symbols and signs. So if on, on Android, some of the keyboards on Android, you can hold down a key and it'll give you uh, uh, like a, an a apostrophe or the desired um, mark. 
It doesn't work like that here. One of the cool and, and unique, one of the cool and unique uh, features in the Windows Phone OS, and that is its integration with Microsoft Office. So I'm going to click on this. You'll notice, just like the other OSs, it's easy to get to just a pure list view of all your all your apps. I'm going to click on Office. Um, here we go. Here's the home screen. I can move to the right and I can look at different things. I can I can start a new document, a Word document, and just start typing away. I can also open a document and I can look at um, what I'm doing there. You can get in and edit it pretty easily. Um, same goes for Excel, same goes for PowerPoint. Two things to keep in mind. First, you cannot create a new PowerPoint document in Microsoft Office for Windows Phone 7, which is a little bit disappointing because I would imagine this would actually be a great device to use for building out PowerPoints in your spare time. Um, secondly, and this is a bigger disappointment for me, you cannot save a document that you that you create on this device to either Windows, Office Live, or SkyDrive. You have to use SharePoint, which is uh, not as commonly used as those two alternatives. That's a big bummer. I, I would expect that we'd see the ability to save to SkyDrive in the near future. Okay, let's take a look at the marketplace. Uh, it functions much like you would imagine. It's, it's similar in um, uh, functionality to Apple and Android. A uh, couple of key things to consider. Um, first, there are no Google apps in here in the Windows Phone marketplace at all right now, meaning if you want Google Voice or you want Google Maps or anything like that, you're not going to get it, not right now at least. Um, second thing is there actually are a lot more apps than I thought. So if I click on any category, I'm actually going to see a pretty good selection of apps. You know, you're not going to see thousands of them, but I think for launch, the basics are covered. Um, there are, it looks like about 25 games in here right now, and I'll show you that also. Everything from Earthworm Jim to Monopoly, The Sims, Uno, it's all in here. Um, the way you set up an app, let's go, I'll just go through and I'll buy an application right now so we can take a look at how it works. Um, you can, oh, one nice thing, you can actually try apps if you want. Um, in kind of the, the Xbox Live model, you can try a demo copy and then upgrade to a purchase copy if you want. I'm going to take a chance. I know I like flight controls. So I'm just going to buy it right now and show you guys how it works. Um, one interesting thing, you can actually apply payments to your mobile wireless bill as opposed to, uh, you know, um, your, your live account or any other account. But the Windows Phone OS does allow you to switch the way you pay for it. So I'm buying it. This can take a little bit. Um, okay, so we have it downloaded. Now I, all I have to do is uh, click on the uh, Applications button. And... Click on Games. This is a good time to look at... Okay, so there's the app right there. This is also... Let's take a look at the Xbox Live integration, because it's pretty cool. If you're a gamer, um, this, these Windows phones will basically track all your achievements, your avatar, that's me, or the idealized version of me. Um, you can go in, you can change the way you look, you know, all these small little things, and then you have your whole collection of games. So I have six games in here right now. Um, the other thing you can do is you can interact with your Xbox Live friends as well. Okay, the camera. So, the way the camera works is also pretty cool. Every Windows phone is has the the hardware requirement is that it, it has a camera switch, a camera button on the phone itself. That's a big difference from uh, iPhone. It's not mandatory in Android. So if I hold down this camera button, I'll be brought into the uh, camera setting, and now you can see the lovely pieces of the Maximum PC Lab. Um, one cool thing about this phone and, and all Windows phones is that when you take a picture, which I'll do again right now. You can have you can opt to have the picture instantly uploaded to your SkyDrive online. Um, there are a few other things you can do which are also cool. So I'm going to just take a picture of this. Not much of a view, and that's the picture. If I hold it down, I can 
click upload to SkyDrive and that'll do it, but I, have, if I can also have this phone set so that it automatically uploads any picture I take to SkyDrive. The phone uses the Zoom client to synchronize all your photos. You can use Windows Media Player as well, but uh, you, can have it, you can have your Zoom set to auto-sync, so the moment you plug the phone in, it just goes in, syncs up all of your music, syncs in all your podcasts and all your pictures. The photo player itself is pretty cool. Um, what's really interesting is Windows Phone approaches photographs the same way it approaches friends, people, phone calls, and everything else. When you click on pictures, you're going to see all your friends' photo updates, which is pretty cool. And then you can go in and see all of the pictures you've taken. So these are a bunch of pictures I took when I was in Helsinki uh, three years ago. I can go through them all, and uh, if I see one I like, I can zoom in on it and show it to my friends. So here's how the phone phone functions. You can get there either through uh, the the applications tab right here, or I can just click on this AT&T button. This phone has an AT&T service plan on it. Um, it's very simple. I can just click on the connections, and I can see all my contacts here. Or I can uh, just dial in the number directly and call there. Uh, let's take a look at the web browser. So. Like you would imagine, if you have any familiarity with uh, any other smartphones, this functions a lot like the iPhone and Android phones browser. Type in your URL, pull up the web page. I find in general, I, I, I do like the way that the, uh, that the uh, browser renders text. It feels a little bit cleaner than uh, the Android phones. It's not, nowhere near as good as the iPhone. It's still are the gold standard of sorts for this kind of for this kind of browsing experience. So here's how here one important feature of any phone is the settings and what you can do to customize your phone. Here we just have a few things. I can change the background to be darker light. I can change the colors. We got a bunch of different colors here. Maybe I'll go to blue just for shits and giggles. And I'll change this to light. So there's, that's the theme you can change. You get full Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You can set up your accounts pretty easily. And you can also uh, adjust settings for maps and, and uh, browsers and whatnot. There's nothing here that's particularly out of the ordinary. Um, again, just like the rest of the OS, it is pretty in easy to use. Finally, there's one other thing I want to show you that's, that's pretty cool. And it's the way, the, the kinds of effects the interface has. When you get to... I want you to watch this. When you get to, when I'm going to just scroll down, I'm at the top of the screen. I want you to watch how this bounces back. It actually does perform, the OS performs some interesting physics effects so that you know when you're at the bottom or top of a screen. Watch how this compresses when I pull it down. Then it kind of springs back. It's little, little pieces like this are all over the place. The way the OS is kind of vibrant and alive and constantly adjusting is uh, very interesting. So, um, I think what you'll see in general is that this isn't as powerful as the Android OS, but it is far more usable. The, the more I've used this phone um, and the more I've used Android phones also, I'm, I'm beginning to appreciate simplicity and just quick functionality versus power. Okay, that's it. That's a nice uh, elongated look at the Windows Phone 7 operating system. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can always email me, george at maximumpc.com. Over the next week or so, I'm going to bring all the other phones in here and walk you through those as well. Take care.